Hey everybody, welcome to September and welcome to deer season. You know, with deer season, the rut is just right around the corner. And when we talk about the rut, some people think that it's just a short little window. It's not. It's actually a part of deer season that has three parts to it that you should know about. Charlie Alzheimer studied this for us for decades and gave us the most insight on whitetail behavior during these phases. Here's what they are. Number one. The rutting moon is the key. Charlie Alzheimer has studied the moon's effect on the whitetail rut for more than 30 years. His observational research has been published in deer and deer hunting annually since the early 1990s. Those decades worth of observations from across North America have revealed that peak breeding will not occur the same time from year to year. In fact, peak breeding can be as much as 10 to 14 days earlier or later than the previous year. So when the rut actually takes off and goes hot to trot depends on when the second full moon after the autumn equinox occurs. Alzheimer's research has also shown that the timing of the rutting moon comes within a day or two of repeating itself every 11 years and reasonably close to repeating itself every three or four years. Number two, the rut won't be a sprint. It's important to point out that the whitetail rut is an ebb and flow process that lasts approximately 40 days in a finely tuned deer herd. If the adult doe to antlered buck ratio is skewed heavily in favor of does, the process can be much longer. Based on his research data, Alzheimer has observed three distinct phases of the rut, seeking, chasing, and breeding. By the time the second full moon after the autumn equinox arrives, the rut's first phase, the seeking phase, is ramped up. During this phase, bucks are more active during daylight as they cruise their home range and beyond, going from doe group to doe group, searching for the first estrus doe to breed. This process can last upwards of 40 days in some areas of the country. And number three, the rut will have a sweet spot. If you can carve out only one week to hunt this year, you'll be happy to know that there is a special time to hunt during the rut, a magical week to 10 days when deer activity is at its best. All things being equal, the rut sweet spot this year will be from about November 2nd through November 12th in areas north of the 35th latitude. Hey, that was not a typo. What you saw there was correct. That was 2017 information, which makes this even more fascinating. This year's rut is only two days off from that rut from four years ago. So it goes to show that what Charlie was teaching us was pretty much on the money. If you look at this year's calendar, we're gonna look at that sweet spot. It's coming in right before Halloween, October 30th, and it's gonna span to November 8th. That's the sweet spot. Those are the 10 days that you wanna put in, your PTO days, your time off from work. Those 10 days, for all intents and purposes, are gonna be the best days to hunt this year. Throughout this period, bucks will be frantically rubbing, scraping, fighting, cruising their territory, and chasing nearly every doe they encounter. A key during this time is to keep an eye on weather patterns because fronts coming and going will enhance the amount of deer activity, especially if a cold front follows a warm front. When this occurs, buck activity will be off the charts. We are all ready to go. You know, aim small, miss small, that's always in my head whenever I'm bow hunting, whether it's compound bow hunting or crossbow hunting. But that changes a little bit and my attitude towards it changes depending upon how far that shot is. With today's new technology, these new crossbows especially, you can add 10, 20, 30, or even more yardage to your effective range. So does that mean I just go out there and aim at the same spot? No, I do not. Especially, I just shot a doe with, this is a new 10-point Havoc RS440. It's brand new for 2021. I was one of the first people to shoot it, and I shot a doe here last week. And I shot that deer at 50 yards, I'll admit that. That's one of the longer shots I've taken. And the reason why I was able to do that is, yes, the technology is great. These things are spot on and lightning fast, 440 feet per second. But I adjust my aiming a little bit. That deer still needs to be calm. It needs to be broadside and I have to aim small, but I'm not aiming at the same spot as I would on those slam dunk shots at 20 and 30 yards. I move that aiming point out a little bit. 
because I know that deer can duck, that happens, especially, you know, the speed of sound, you do the calculations, the deer's out there 50 or 60 yards, a lot can happen with just a little bit of movement. So for me, you know, if I go back to when I started bow hunting, we always said, if you could put 10 out of 10 in a paper plate, you were good to go, no matter what distance you were. Well, if I'm shooting 50 yards and beyond, it has to be better than that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna aim a little bit outside that pocket, you know, right by the, right behind the leg, a little bit to the far end of it, maybe an inch, inch and a half, and a little bit lower. It sounds like a really small difference, but it makes a big difference if that deer moves just a little bit. And with today's technology, I know I'm still gonna be in the kill zone and have enough kinetic energy to put that deer down quickly and humanely.